the Mac and Pete project. So I think we should start this with trying to figure out what I think we just watched. Uh, because I'm not too sure what happened. I think I know what happened. And what 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 did you say? Uh, I, w- I was saying that you finally got your standalone episode. Maybe. Yeah. It's as good as it's going to I mean, it's that, that this is it. It's as good as it'll get. So, if you cut this episode out, it wouldn't have affected the storyline. Yeah. Yeah, I, I guess we'll go with that. And we essentially have no progression into the real story arc of the of the season. And that's exactly why I said you got your standalone episode. Yeah. Picard's in a coma from getting hit by Brent Spiner's Tesla. Correct, and which is odd to me because he's an android. So, and I think this is just going to show, like, how last season was supposed to show that the androids of last season are not like the TNG androids. They're essentially just human flesh, but artificially created, but have the strength of TNG androids. Which except, is kind except, of... Except Picard, because they just dialed it back. Okay. I, I think it would be better just to say Picard's a clone now, you know? Yes, I'll go with that. Um, a synthetic. Then, it was really funny, because uh, what what's the name of the Watcher? Is it Tannen? Talon? I don't. You know how I am with. Yeah. I, I don't. Talon. I don't Talon. When she puts on that device to go into Picard's mind to try to get him out of it, I'm like, huh, that piece of metal really looks like a Romulan ear. <laughs> and then at the end of the episode, she's like, oh, I'm going to show you. You've earned this. And then she's like, uh, I can't turn on the camouflage because it will it takes eight hours for it to turn back on, so I'm just going to have to use my hair to hide it. And I, I didn't so, understand that. I'm not... I, I'm really confused on the technology of what's being used because they can beam from planet to planet across vast distances. That's the uh, old Gary 7 technology. So when you look at the Gary 7, it was not influenced by this timeline because it exists outside of the Federation. So the technology was superior. They could beam across the galaxy. And now we have one that they can't even camouflage on and off. I mean, heck. Data and Picard went on Romulus for days and a half because they were surgically altered. I mean, uh, yeah, I I don't know. But uh, this is me just jumping around again already. But go crazy, do it. Start off with Picard's in a coma and he's in his therapy session. I wasn't aware Starfleet employed psychologists like you anymore. Well, Starfleet, judge and jury of all things meritorious. I'm here to take care of the emotional well-being of the crew. Counselors started being assigned to starships about 40 years ago when they realized that the pressures of extended space you're, travel... You're a psychologist! It's true. The human version is clearly a lesser model. But there are those who have built such walls around their wounds. Even a basis or can't get a read is most... Starship captains have to be content with a human counselor. Is that resentment? Which for like half a second, I was like, is that Alexander Sadig? You know? And I'm like, oh, I, I do that to him. I, I, I had that feeling too. But off the bat, besides knowing that... So there's two things that were going through my head. The, the one is because he is an android, was this a diagnostic... 
because he has a, an android brain? Is it like when Data would dream when we saw that in, you know, and we've seen in the first season where they use dreams and stuff? Would you like to finish it, Captain? I wasn't sure where it was going, and then I, I realized as they were diving in that this guy is more than just a Starfleet, you know, psychologist. So. Yeah, and so Talon goes inside the brain, and it's like Ricard's playing out a the memory that we've been seeing all season of right. him playing with his mother, or the queen with red hair in this case, because I guess she In this case, yeah wearing a wig for a pretend and i guess there's a monster chasing them and they go and hide in the basement and we spend the whole yeah. episode with P young picard which i thought was funny because I, I thought alex kurtzman would think we would be too stupid and what i'm surprised the 10 year old kid was involved you know <laughs> I did like the little quib about I at least kept my hair um, from his dad. You lived longer than I did, but I got to keep my hair. Not exactly a fair trade, is it? The way that the dream was set up is, first of all, it's Picard being Picard. So Picard is very, why am I doing this almost? Which for Picard, of course, he's always seemed very introverted into himself, but he would he would always seek the counsel of Deanna Troy, who was the ship's counselor. You're a psychologist. And he wouldn't fight against that process. I've been fortunate to have access to your Betazoid abilities. Most starship captains have to be content with a human counselor. But in this case, he was agitated. He was, why am I here? Why am I doing this? Almost like, you know, a, a police officer that was in a shooting and they have to do a psyche valve. It yeah. was almost that same feeling. It's like but, for some reason, his android brain is bringing up this repressed memory. Right. And how and, he totally misremembered things. And because it turns out the psychologist is uh, his father. Son. You were relentless, father. Correct. And apparently the and father wasn't chasing him to abuse him. It was to keep him safe from his mother, who appears to be schizophrenic. Is that what it is? Your mother suffered cycles of terrible darkness. She needed help, but she wouldn't accept it. So... To my understanding, that's probably along the lines of what's going on. The only other thing that I can think of is he's chasing uh, Picard's mother for the purpose of saving her life. Maybe she's suicidal because he keeps hinting that there's a darker part of this story. There's Yeah, um, but they had to so, keep her in the room for some reason. So and they're he, trying to keep her in the so what I'm thinking is they have to keep her, you know, tied down or from hurting herself or the old rubber room type deal. Yeah. I'm not sure. So but but I do know that there's more to it and then Talon picks up on that. She goes and says, What's what else? What's there? And then of course Picard, which is not like Picard, where he deflects when he figures out that maybe because in this moment, this is what I'm thinking. Q is trying to teach you something from your past that you've been bringing through your entire life that you've let, yet to learn. That's what I think is going on. But then he's like, oh, I'm going to go after the trickster now and I'm going to do this and do that. And then he goes to Guinan's bar and then they have this weird sequence. Yeah, yeah. yeah. Before we get to that, um, just the uh, I'm going to bring up like the total like canon inaccuracies of Picard's parents. Because we've seen both his parents on TNG. We saw his That's mother right. in like the third or fourth episode of TNG. Uh, the one with the no, travel. No. Yeah. Because yeah. Cause the crew is uh, having daydreams of, you know, something that they're thinking about. And Picard is with his mother. And she's reached old age. So 
So not to say that this new Picard show doesn't, because it seems like I the feeling I get is it seems like the mother died pretty young in the new Picard. That's show. that's the feeling I got. Unless there's, I don't know where they're going with it. And the because... other thing, yeah, yeah, yeah. And it we've also seen Picard's father in Tapestry. Correct. And, and he's balding, I believe, back here at least. And he's just giving him the old speech of like, "I told you not to run off to that academy. This you'll just end up dead." I told you not to go running off to that academy, Father. I told you that Starfleet would bring you to a bad end. They go out of their way in this episode for the therapist slash father to make the comment, "You've you've gotten a lot older than me, but at least I've kept my hair." But I, I need to go back and watch and confirm this, but I'm pretty sure it was an older man, like, balding. So it's like, they've screwed up twice in that canon. So the problem I'm having, and, and this is unfortunate, this episode was decent. This episode, when you take all of the inconsistent, just face value. Right, right. But now you look at the canon, the story doesn't, it's not backed up. Even even if this let's say that this he's misremembering because he's an android now or whatever you throw in there, I can't believe that you're you're misremembering to that detail. And we've talked about having a different actor, and you know we understand we don't have access to thirty year old Whoopi Goldberg and that type of deal, but not even to get it even close to yeah. what it was. Because, yeah, as you said, if you strip away everything that relates to season two Picard and you somehow work this into, like, the A story of a TNG episode and you find some kind of technological or astronomical phenomenon to um, make a, a B story for, yeah, I think this could have worked. But just how it's presented, I'm like, what is the point of this? Why, why are we dealing with his mother issues? And it's like, and what does this have to do with fixing the timeline? You know? And that's why I said the only way that it makes any sense, and of course I'm trying to make sense of making sense, is that Q's trying to teach him a lesson about his past in the past. Mm-hmm. As opposed to, I'm sending you, and he's Q's like, I know what Picard's going to do. He's going to... And then they're making this big, like, Q is, you know, impotent, has no power. And so I don't, I'm just, as the season, the season started very strong, very, very, and very good. And as we've gone on, instead of just being bad episodes, we've lost all cohesion. Mm-hmm. And, mm-hmm. and that's my problem right now. I, I have no, and you said it best when you were saying, hey, when are you ready? He said, I have no idea what show I'm watching because we've seen in other Star Treks where they've done like a holodeck episode or they've done like a trickster type thing where they've done it. um, Not one of the best DS9 episodes, but they are trapped inside the game, you know, and they're doing the little skipping. There's context for that type of episode, but I don't see how it's driving this story unless it's a standalone for character building. But a standalone for character building in a normal 20 episode season would be peppered throughout or in this case maybe if you wanted to do one or two in the beginning and i know you're not crazy you're damn right i'm not i'm getting this the bad feeling that they are going to connect picard's mother issue with gerardi becoming the boar queen and somehow merging those together which probably it's just (sighs) so i guess before we finish with picard's um uh, story in this episode. Let's go around to all of our side plots, which you know didn't go. Where the 
I, I, I chuckled because right before we started recording, uh, I read the synopsis for this episode. Let me read the synopsis on Paramount Plus. Okay. Talon ventures inside Picard's subconscious mind to help him wake from a coma and face both his darkest secrets and deepest fears. Seven and Rafi go in search of Jurati, whom they fear has succumbed to the monster inside. Rio struggles to hide the truth of who he really is from Teresa. Air date, April 13th, 2022. Um, I feel like we don't even need to talk about anything but from just reading that synopsis, because it's like... You didn't need, if anybody wanted to know what happened in the episode, just read the synopsis and save your... I don't know, was it... Was it a 40-minute episode? I don't remember. Uh, 46 minutes. Save um, the 46 minutes. Because it's like, it makes it sounds like Seven and Rafi did some detective work, and and it's like, their stuff was so... I, I bet they didn't have two minutes of screen time this episode. And their dialogue was lackluster. Oh, oh, you and me. Now, see, we're, we're totally different. Now, our pain is beautiful and tragic, and everyone loves hearing about it. Absolutely. Oh my gosh. Their die I I we went from seven of nine being one of the strongest characters on Voyager, who had a complex, provoking story, to now she is underutilized and now cast type into being the I'm promoting the lesbian story on a, a on a show to be popular. As opposed I to, to doing it. I forgot to bring this up last week, but do you remember what she did at the gala? She did nothing. I don't think she had any lines in that episode until they took Picard to the hospital. I, I don't remember seven yeah, in the episode. Yeah, saw her in the background when Rafi's like, look at her having a good time. Someone's enjoying themselves. Mm-hmm. There's a lot of baggage with those Borg implants. It's kind of nice to see her travel light for a while. I'm watching... Ra uh, Raffi, yeah. and I'm realizing it seems like somebody wrote a 20, 20th, 21st century character and plop, just plopped her in the 25th century, 24th, 25th century. It's like they have no understanding of the complexity of humanity at this point, and they're just taking... Yeah. Uh, I okay. kind of just stop listening when she opens her mouth. <laughs> and, and here's the thing. For me to be that upset about it, you have to be a great actress because whatever you're, you're good. But here's the problem. You're not for Star Trek. Your character isn't Star Trek. Right. So they, they go hunting for Jurati because they're, they finally figure this. Oh, we should go look for her because we haven't seen her since she uh, sung that song at the gala. Yeah, it might be a good idea. I wonder what she's up to. Oh, that's Jurati. Mm -hmm. uh, and then they go to the bar because they find, say somehow are able to look at all the CCTV footage and they saw that she went to a bar and broke a window and that causes seven to go through the trash, find a glass bottle and throw it on the sidewalk. And she's like, Oh wow. That released a lot of endorphins. That's what the board queen's trying to do. She's trying to get an endorphin rush so she can fully take over. And I'm like, what made you even the think to go, looking for a trash bin to test to see how that felt. How did you even think there would be glass there? Yeah. I have a lot of problems with that. Okay. <laughs> so you're telling me, so that's like asking me, we're going to travel back to the 1700s and I know what a street's going to look like. I have no idea. You know, you know what I mean? Do I'm going to find this and find out, there's no way that they would have found out what, what she was doing. Now, if you're watching the thing and you realize, oh, she's doing things that are very aggressive or things that are dangerous, well, by golly, you're seven of nine, and you apparently know the process of making a board queen. Wouldn't endorphins be the, that good? Oh, hey, she's trying to accelerate her, her process. You wouldn't need to, to do any of that. I thought she was going to do something stupid like, this glass was broken from the inside. <laughs> you know? Like, I'm glad it wasn't that stupid, but oh my goodness. Um, it was, it's kind of like young Frankenstein when they walk over to the violin. It's still warm. 
Uh, uh, just a side note. Um, the 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 band that was playing at the bar, that singer, is uh, Patrick Stewart's current wife. Really? Yeah. Uh, <laughs> Sunny Ozel. Now the yeah. funny thing is, I'm really disappointed that they didn't have the the green drum set from Nexus from uh, Nemesis. Wrong, wrong, <laughs> wrong timeline. Wrong timeline. <laughs> but yeah, well, so I guess they're like, oh no, the Agnes is gonna assimilate the Earth now, where they're defenseless, and it seems like. Well, if you put a bullet in the back of her head, I think you pretty much can stop her. For an EMP to neutralize all the uh, nanites inside of her. Just uh, saying. So what? I, I guess that leaves us with Rios, who I, I think is my favorite character. I mean, I'm, I'm over my crush with uh, Gerardi. I mean, I, I, like, I still have a crush on her, but Rios is probably my favorite character. I'm from Chile. I just... For work in outer space. You've been the most consistent. Yeah, and uh, and as you mentioned earlier, I, the the line she's like, "Are you from space?" He's like, "I'm from Chile. I only work in outer space." It's it just it just gave me goosebumps because I just I wanted to have a Michelob light and a pizza. I just don't tell me you're from outer space. No, I'm from Iowa. I only work in outer space. Oh, well, I was close. But I didn't understand. It's like he, he didn't even attempt to like have a conversation with her. He just beamed her and his son onto his ship. Welcome to La Sirena. And like, it, I don't... It, didn't you say earlier in the season that, hey, I just don't know why they can't show, you know, do the lily thing and, hey, Papua New Guinea... You know, yeah, I, I know I did say that, but it's like at this point, it just it seemed rushed. It didn't seem like he even tried to explain what was going on. But here's the thing. If they do it um, when like the TOS episode when they're looking, uh, well, Captain Christopher, well, he uh, he's not going to do anything important, but his son is. Well, maybe they'll look and find out that they have no and they'll take him back with them. I don't know. Maybe yeah, that's what, they, what they're going to try to do. Which just seems awkward because I think Rios is supposed to be currently dating Gerardi, but we don't get that. We're not reminded of that often enough. Uh, I think we got we got the drop line by Raffi or Seven about the one kiss on the cheek or something, and then they were discussing like their actual storylines within the the thing that was. Because like on Never screen right now, it's like I don't see them as a couple except for that very first episode of how casual they were on the bridge. Yeah. The stargazer. But, um, and, uh, and I guess this leaves us with um, uh, yeah, before Talon leaves, she review reveals her Romulan heritage, and she's like, usually we watch after our own species, but sometimes we get tasks where we have to go off worlding you know which is right. I guess, consistent with gary seven because you said he had the, it is consistent with gary seven. the tr transport between worlds and then picard's like you know what i i'm tired of waiting for q to catch up to me i'm gonna go after him i'm gonna go on the offensive because he's trying to teach me something and he's like and it's like how do you summon a god and it's like i'm gonna go to gynan so that that is probably the major problem I have with this episode. Okay. So you look at all the other stuff that's going on and you're telling me it's this is canon, that's not canon. I could probably excuse the recasting of Picard's parents because you saw him and wondered. It wasn't like you're a, a reoccurring person. Yeah. I could probably excuse it if they came close. They didn't. Okay. But this really bothered me. Because, yeah, you can – they're going so deep where it's not – there's no subtlety anymore in Guinan's character. There's no mystery where that was her thing. She was right. mysterious. Where we, we all know what did he do before. He literally would stand there and yell, Q, Q, and he'd show up. 
Then a good laugh now, Q. Does it amuse you to think of me living out the rest of my life as a dreary man in a tedious job? I gave you something most mortals never experience. If he would have done that first and then said, it's not working, I wonder why. And then go to Guinan and say, this is what I did. And then and bringing out the bottle and then all of a sudden she squeals like a banshee. I, <laughs> Well, then I thought that Q heard them, and then he's going to walk down the stairs because he couldn't. So I was like, okay, maybe. And then all of a sudden, it's the guy from Voyager. He did that one that one temporal episode, and I think he's he might have been on SNL, the, who became who's an FBI agent, and he's talking. And then that was just now. Now where are you going with this? Are you saying he was play he's playing a character that was on Voyager, or is it an actor? The actor who played oh, okay. a character on Voyager. Okay. You know. Because I was like, I was trying to figure out who it was, and I'm like, and then he's just sitting there at the bar, and they're continuing their discussion. I'm like, are you guys, are you guys dumb? It's like you need to get rid of this guy before you start talking again. And then he starts talking yeah, about. Yeah, well. The and then he walks over, and he, and then, I don't know about you. I would know something's up, but I, I have no idea what they're doing. So I guess and then, Picard and Guinan are now arrested by federal agents. And now we're going to do the, the same jailbreak that we did the last time? We, uh, I just... How many episodes do we have left? Four. Three. This was Three. seven. So this was seven. You, we're going to waste another episode of rescuing Picard. We're going to and then wrapped up the episode in the last two. Uh, I mean, the season. I, I think there's ten. Um, I think that's correct. But yeah, it's like I don't know. So I, I'm I don't just having. Him. To, I don't want to talk about this anymore until next week. We I, were I understand. Seven minutes, and it's like. I, I honestly just wanted to come on and and just say. Don't waste your time. Yeah, it's, uh, that's what we should have done, but I think this is more beneficial because it's like nothing makes sense unless you're brand new to this show and you're like, and you just love the J.J. Abrams mystery box. You like to watch garbage television like Manifest. And yeah, I can see... I can see why people like it because it, it looks it's shot well. It has good music, it has good camera work, cinematography, special effects. You feel like you're watching something that ever you feel like you have a mystery to solve. And no, well, if you're a diehard Trekkie, I feel like you would have a very hard time with digesting everything. Yes, um, and that's the polar opposite because it's like. A, uh, a diehard Trekkie is not a general audience. Correct. So if you're a general audience, we don't want to turn you off. I mean, please enjoy it by all means. I think we're our little niche is is Trekkies who feel the same way we do. Yeah. Um, so, uh, but yeah. Well, we'll see you next week. Um, I'm not even going to waste your time with predictions. I think we've already said that. Well, I have one, Pete. Okay, go ahead. A train wreck. I know what I need, and it is not here. <laughs>